Okay, now this video is good for beginners and it uses products that I bought at the store and you're gonna be able to find very similar or these exact same problems at your local stores as well. Now I made a video about a month ago that got like 1.1 million views and I'm gonna go ahead and link that below because that video also used a store-bought product and showed you a way to kind of get your lawn started for the year. But one of the questions that I got from a lot of people is, hey Al, what's next? And this video is gonna show you two applications that you can do to take your lawn to the next level or to the next step following on to that one. But the other part of that is if you haven't done anything yet, if you're just finding this video, maybe you just bought your house or you just decided, hey, I wanna get my lawn going, you can actually start with the products that I'm showing you in this video and start your lawn off to a healthy run for the rest of the summer and into the fall. Now, I know you see a lot of palm trees behind me. That's because I'm in Florida, but I want you to know that the products that I'm gonna recommend here will work for all grass types, no matter where you live, north, south, east, or west. But there is one caveat, and that being, if you have warm season turf, you can start this right now. And in fact, if you see the growth curve right there, warm season turf, you see it puts in most of its growth right now in the summer. So you can start right away and really get your lawn running hard and really help the lawn to thicken up and you can see results as long as you're watering. Cool season lawns are a little bit different, but you can also take on this strategy. Just realize if your lawn is brown and dormant because you haven't been watering it, then this probably isn't gonna work for you. You're gonna need to wait until temperatures subside a little bit and the lawn starts to wake up from that summer dormancy on its own. You're gonna wanna wait until cooler temperatures prevail. Now that could be sometime in August, maybe even in September. But either way, you still wanna start with the watering plan that I'm gonna give you because that's a good way to get things going. So when your cool season lawn, your Kentucky bluegrass, your turf type tall fescue, or your perennial rye does start to wake up from summer dormancy, you'll be ready to go and ready to run quick. Hey, all right, so uh, I'm gonna show you a product that you can get at the store. In fact, I just picked this one up this morning at my local Home Depot overbiter. And uh, this is a product that you can use all grass types, doesn't matter, and you can use it no matter what shape your lawn is in. So this is my lawn. This is a different grass type. This is zoysia, so there's not really a comparison either way. This is a, a darker grass anyway, but here it is. This is my neighbor's lawn right here. And he's given me permission to give a treatment on this. Now, it's a little hazy overcast right now, so when I get my before pictures later, I'll kind of get some better ones that are in the bright sunlight also. So that way when we do the after pictures, I can have the same exact lighting. So I can really show you the dramatic difference we're gonna get with this product that I got at the store. I'm also gonna give the lawn a cut first. You don't have to do that, it just needs it. And I don't wanna, you know, apply product to a lawn that's not cut. That's just me though. Anyway, here's the, uh, here's the product. So here it is, Ironite. This has been around for many years. They've actually changed the formulation a couple times over the years, but this works really well. You can get this at any store. I paid $18 for this and it covers 5,000 square feet. And that's another thing. We're going to go over there and measure our lawn space because I'm only going to do the front and the side. And uh, I'll show you that in a minute. The key to this, the key that makes this product work so well is that it's got 20% iron. Iron is what gives lawns the bluish look. Doesn't matter what your grass type is, it's gonna give you a blue-green look. This is extremely high iron and it's gonna work. Now it's a granular, so you're gonna to have to water it in and it's gonna take a few days for, it to see, for you to see results. The other thing everybody always asks, is this gonna burn my lawn? I mean, if you spill, I mean, if you spill a large portion of it in your lawn, it's gonna burn that spot. But as far as, you know, if you put down more than you should, which I'm not encouraging you to put down more than you should, you should always follow the label. But if you made a mistake or something like that and you double applied, no, it's not gonna burn your lawn at all. And the reason it won't burn is this has a polymer coating on each of the prills. Polymer coating is just a fancy way of saying it makes the nutrients release slowly. As that polymer breaks down, it releases the nutrients slowly, which is gonna help it not to burn if you get too much. But the other thing that it does is it makes the green last longer. And you could expect the green from this product to last well over a month. One other thing the polymer coating does is it keeps the iron from staining your sidewalk and driveway. Iron is notorious. If you leave it on a driveway or sidewalk, it'll leave an orange spot or an orange stain. The polymer coating stops that from happening, but you still need to blow everything off and back into the lawn because if you do leave it on there for a long period of time, extended period, it can stain. So just gives you that extra time to blow it back in the lawn and that's really where you want the product anyway. 
Now some of you might be wondering why I'm telling you to start with iron, and that is because iron is a micronutrient. Micronutrients mean that the plant needs much smaller amounts of them in order to get results or in order to get what it needs. And iron also does give you a nice color pop, as you'll see here in our example lawn. But the idea being that it's hot right now, and if you haven't done anything for your lawn or your lawn is struggling from the heat, it doesn't have to eat a giant meal because it's only eating that micronutrient. So it's kind of a nice way to kind of wake it up with a nice, slow, small meal before you start giving it larger meals of nitrogen in a few weeks. Okay, well I feel like it looks better already. <laughs> Uh, anyway, all right, now what I need to do is measure, just real quick, because you have to know how much to put down, and the key to unlocking that piece of knowledge is to know how big your lawn space is. So I'm just gonna do a real quick measurement by stepping it off. Every step is three feet. Okay, so my quick measurements, that was 13 steps that way and 11 that way, I skipped the sidewalk, so that's translates out when you multiply by three because we're getting into square footage. I'm not gonna spend a ton of time on lawn measuring here. I'll link below to videos that I did on how to measure your lawn. It's very important, but I've covered it before and you're welcome to check out those videos. Lots of good educational stuff there as well. Long and the short of it is I have 1287, so we're gonna round that to 1300 square feet, which is fine. And then I got a little bit on the side, which is 468, we're gonna round that to 500. So I'm working with 1,800 square feet total. Now, if you wanted to just do hasty math, you can see this bag covers 5,000 square feet. You have 1,800, which is 2,500 would be half. So what you could do if you wanted to is just dump in slightly less than half and you'd be fine. But let me just show you how to get the exact measurement. So you can come here and see there are spreader settings and it says right there, three pounds per 1,000 square feet. That's called your application rate. Now you can also, do some math same way it covers 5,000 square feet and it's a 15 pound bag so 15 divided by 5 is 3 that means 3 pounds of this product is supposed to be evenly spread across each 1,000 square foot of your lawn now I'm working with 1,800 square feet which is 1.8 1,000 square foot sections so if I take 1.8 times 3 I get 5.4 so I need 5.4 pounds of that product in that spreader Would you look at that? I eyeballed it just right on the first one. Pretty cool. Now listen, with this product and with most applications of fertilizer type products, you don't have to be that close. I just wanted to show you one way that you could get it down to the exact poundage because some of you will care about that. I know I do. But if not, again, you would just eyeball this at over one third, less than one half of the bag and you'd be just fine. Now, of course, they do give you the spreader setting also. And uh, I'm using a Scott's here, and all the Scott spreaders are the same, and it says it's a setting three. However, again, I always like to teach you the why behind everything. I've had it happen so many times where somebody gets one of these spreaders, they set it on three, they pour the whole bag in, and then they end up coming up short, and they stop short, and that's not my move. The reason that happens is because these are just cheap spreaders, they're plastic, and sometimes the adjustments are off or whatever. So that's why actually weighing this out and understanding, okay, that amount should go down exactly across my area there. And if I have some left over or I run up short, that means my spreader's off. And then you can make adjustments for the next time to make sure you do get it right. That's the reason I show you those extra steps, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. In the interest of being thorough, I'm just gonna let you know, I am gonna add in a little extra over and above the 5.4 pounds. And that's because when you get the last few grains down in here, it makes it really tough for it to disperse evenly. So I like to have you know, this covered up when I'm over, which tells me everything was being dispersed evenly. I just know that from the experience that I have that it's better to do that. So I am gonna add an extra couple splashes in and I should have those extra couple splashes there when I'm done. All right, so logically I'm just gonna do one pass up here and get that done. I'm gonna go down here and when I come back, I'm gonna throw back to the wheel tracks of the previous pass and each time I go back, I'm throwing back to the wheel tracks of the previous pass. I'm not gonna be doing any kind of trim pass or anything. Anything that gets in the sidewalk, I'll just blow it back in. It's one of the good reasons to edge first. It gives you a little something to blow the excess back into. So, all right, let's do it.
All right, so here we are. This is nine days after the application of Ironite. And I'm pretty sure you can tell we have a really good response here. Now we're not perfect. We still have quite a ways to go. You can see I still got a couple weak spots here, but this is probably where the irrigation isn't covering as well as it should, maybe up there. But for sure, we are much greener than we were when I started. Even look it up through here. Now obviously it's in need of a cut, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll show you the next step. Now I'm in fertilizer bands here, so I can't really do what I wanna do here. However, you can. And in fact, there's a secret to look for when it comes to summer fertilizers. So I'm gonna take you now to a couple of home improvement stores and show you exactly what to look for. Some certain keywords to look for on the label of summer fertilizers to know that number one, you're not gonna burn, number two, that it's gonna be slow release, and number three, basically, that it's gonna give your lawn what it needs as a second step to wake up after this first step of micronutrients. Now, before I go to the store and show you what to look for for the next step, which would come about nine or 10 days after that ironite application, let me just say this. I use the word burn in the title of this video, not burning your lawn. You're gonna see it in a lot of the marketing stuff on the, bag, on the bags of fertilizer as well. You know, won't burn your lawn. Let me just tell you, do not fear the burn. I don't really know where this notion that you could burn your lawn with fertilizer came from. I don't know if it's that technology, old technology, maybe the fertilizer that your dad used didn't have the same technology that we have today. And that, that fear of the burn has been passed down in your DNA from generation to generation. I'm not really sure. But just trust me, if you follow what I'm telling you, if you measure your lawn and you put only the right amount of fertilizer for your square footage in that hopper, it's very unlikely that you're gonna burn the lawn. Even if you did an application that was three or even four times heavier than what the bag states, don't do that. I'm not trying to challenge you, but I'm just saying if you did an app that was three or four times heavier than the bag states, if you put it down evenly across the lawn, you're probably not gonna burn it. Now, if you spill something, then yes, you'll burn it. A pile of fertilizer will burn a spot in the lawn. But as far as burning your entire lawn, just get that out of your mind. Measure the area to be done, put the right amount of fertilizer in the hopper, set it, and forget it. You'll be all good. If you can get over that fear of burning your lawn and get a little bit of experience, I promise you, your results will happen that much quicker. And speaking of the technology that we have these days, let me show you what's been put on many of these store-bought fertilizers to help you overcome your fear of the burn. All right, now I'm gonna show you some things that you can look for when you're at your local Home Depot over by there, or Lowe's, I'm gonna go there too. See what we can see. But there's a few things you wanna look for if you wanna store bought fur. All right, so Vigoro is Home Depot's brand, and we got basically 37 bucks for 42 pounds. That covers 15,000 square feet, so I can do some math on that for you. But we wanna look for a marketing wank that kind of says like this. See this Assurance Particle Technology with no burn, even greening. So what that's telling me is this has probably got some sort of polymer coat on it, and that's great for summer. See, derived from methylene ureas, urea polymer coated. And then, oh, sulfur coated urea, oh, good old SCU. But either way, it's coated, the urea is, and that's what makes it release slow. That's why these are great for summer for really any turf, but they're really good for warm season turf because you can get a lot down and you can get sustained green for quite a while. So here's another one. This is a Scott's product. This is $55. And this one's gonna cover 17,000, 18,000 square feet. But see, they show you their coated urea right there. See, here it is again, urea, polymer coated urea. That's what makes it last longer, release slowly. One thing I am noticing though, no iron in either one of those, and that's probably to keep costs down. It's more expensive to coat that urea so they don't add the the uh, iron in there to keep the cost down but that's why we're using the ironite anyway that's our other store-bought product that I talked about earlier in the video this is another good product for summer I mentioned this before a little more expensive though 28 bucks for 4,000 square foot of coverage but this is that summer guard or summer lawn food so you can see polymer coated urea just like the other ones 34% but then it's got this in here, which they call wetting agents, so basically surfactants or whatever. Not the same as hydrotain, but supposed to do the same thing. 
It's supposed to help with the water retention for you. Any one of those would be good to follow up your ironite app. Remember we use the ironite to kind of get things going, to wake things up slow, because it's easy to ingest. And then you can start putting in that nitrogen. And this is the slow release stuff that you're looking for. These polymer coats, you know, SCU, sulfur coated urea, that kind of stuff, which most of that is what you're gonna find here in the summer. Okay, now I'm over here by the Lowe's. Now you got some different choices over here. And some of these you're gonna find in most of the Southeast, but we're still gonna look for some certain keywords. So I'll first point out, this is the Sunnyland version of Ironite. And this stuff also works great. The only reason I didn't pick this up is I just wasn't at Lowe's, but it's actually cheaper, 1097. 20 pounds for 4,000 square feet. So that's a company I like. Again, all store-bought stuff. This is all Sunnyland stuff. Now, this is what I've been using on the Zoysia in front of the offices over at the church was these things here. There's a 1608, but look, poly-coated. That's what you're looking for right there. Now, I bet some of you are picking up on the fact that I keep saying the term slow release. Slow release fertilizer is great, but it's not a must. You don't have to have slow release fertilizer. And in fact, some of these fertilizers have some slow release and some immediate release. It's all just a kind of a blend. But the reason you want slow release in the summer, especially if you're just waking the lawn up, is again, you're kind of feeding it slowly instead of hammering it all at one time and having it push a ton of growth. So one other way to get slow release besides these polymer coated or sulfur coated urea products is to get an organic fertilizer like Melorganite. And I'm gonna show you a little trick there or if you want one of our products, we have the 818 X Green, which the pro guys, they call it sneaky green because it's a slow release as well, but then it sustains for quite a while. But let me show you Melorganite and how to find or identify if you're looking at a Melorganite clone because there happen to be so many of those out these days too. And then of course, another way to get slow release is with our old buddy Melorganite. Now, I don't need to go over this too much, but we can do pricing. Wow, up to 16 bucks, holy cow. And uh, you can vary the rates on this however you want, really. But this is slow release because it's organic. So this is gonna break down based on heat and then microbes in the soil break it down. So organics are always slow release, non-burning. So obviously this is another great choice for summer if you wanted to go this way, if you could find it. And then over here is the Sunnyland version that really, really smells like success. Holy cow. There he is, Lee Moore. Look at him shorts. So cute, nabi nice. But uh, this one is 12 bucks, a little cheaper. Not sure if it's the same size bag or not, but yeah, it's two pounds less. I'm not gonna go through all the math on it. But when you're looking for what you would call a malorganite clone, what you wanna look for is this, derived from biosolids. There are several companies now making malorganite clones and the way that you know it's a malorganite clone outside of just the analysis being somewhere around that 640 is you find out on the back if it's derived from biosolids and if it is that's how you know it's a malorganite clone now obviously i like to go for the original when i can but if you can't find it that's how you know if you're getting a slow release malorganite type fertilizer is it's derived from biosolids. No burning, great for summer. Now all of this hinges though on the fact that you're watering the lawn. All living things need watered, especially lawns in the middle of the summer, they need to be watered. I'm gonna link below or also link up here in the eye to some watering strategies that I've created and we call it the tuna can challenge. It's just basically making a watering plan and understanding how much water's going down in each section of the lawn. So that way you can water your way through the heat and really help your fertilizer that you're putting down to actually get maximum benefit for you. However, there is one product that you can use that will extend your watering or have you not have to water quite so much. It's called Hydrotain and it works really well. It's really hard for me to illustrate how well it works in a lawn, but I can illustrate it with some potted plants. So check out this video that I did just a couple weeks ago. Hey, real quick, I don't know where I'm gonna fit this into a video somewhere, but oftentimes I'll have people ha ask me, hey, does Hydrotain work? And then also have people say, well, I applied Hydrotain, but I don't know if it's working. And that is because it's really hard to see a lawn if you, you know, apply it to your whole lawn. I mean, how do you know if you're watering less, right? You don't, you don't really. You could test sections, but sections when it comes to a lawn are covered differently by water. Soil composition can be different. It's just, it's tough. 
But one way that I can show you that it works and I can test it is through potted plants because it's more of a controlled environment. It's also a much larger plant, so it's easier for me to show you results. So I have these plants here, these flowers. I don't even know what kind these are. And I've got two that are identical here. And actually, I'll show you what they look like. They're all wilted, but here is one here. And so this is what they look like when they have plenty of water. And you can see the, the leaves are nice and standing up tall and, you know, things are looking good. This here is not part of it. This is a succulent, so totally different thing. And actually, these are called ogre's ears. <laughs> cool. And then this is a different flower. But it's these flowers here. So you can see what the leaves look like. Now, let me show you what they look like when they're struggling, when they're, they don't have enough water. So you can see they're curled up. Similar to grass blades, grass blades curl up too. So they, they hang low and then you can see they're curled up. The blooms are sagging as well. So that's what they look like. So I got one here and then I have the same one over here. And you can see this one is also sagging and wilting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give both of them some water because when you apply hydrotain, you wanna make sure that the soil has some wetness to it or it's damp at least, it doesn't have to be soaked, but it's damp. So I'm gonna give them both a little bit of water and then I'm gonna give one hydrotain and the other one just more water. You'll see, so everything is equal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give that one over there just water and we'll give this one here water plus hydrotain. All right, so they're both gonna get 64 ounces of water to start. So here we go, 64 ounces of water going in here. Okay, and I'll put 64 ounces of water on this one here. Now you'll see from me watering them, they're both gonna perk back up by the morning, but it's the end of the day that's gonna prove that the hydrotain works because you'll see this one will be wilted at the end of the day tomorrow and that one won't be. All right, so that one's 64. Now, they're each gonna get an additional 64 ounces. However, one is gonna get a little bit of hydrotain. Now, it's tough for me to measure out, like a lawn app, you would do six to nine ounces per thousand. That's hard for me to do it. I mean, this is just a tiny little potted plant. So I'm just gonna give it like a cap full. See that? Bubbly, bubbly. So this one is gonna get 64 ounces of the water plus the cap full of hydrotain. You can probably see it's slightly yellow, indicating that it does have the hydrotain in it. So let's put that in now. When any overflows here. Yeah, these are bone dry. You see they're holding all that water. Okay, there we go. I will give this a rinse and then give this one 64 ounces of water only. That way we're the same. All right, there we go. Now, all things are equal except for that far one over there. Got a cap full of hydrotain in its second 64 ounce watering. Now we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see the results. Okay, so here we are back now. It wasn't 24 hours. They both actually did fine through that. It's actually about 36 hours later, and now we're able to see the hydrotain kicking in while the other one that didn't get treated, it only got the water, is suffering. So here you go. Now I need to get some water on this guy because <laughs> I don't want him to, to get any permanent damage, but you can see the leaves are all cupped and, and curled and not doing well. It's, it's all sagging. just like what it looked like when I gave it water the other day. And now here over here is the one that got the hydrotain. Look at it, flowers are bright, standing up. Look at that, no sag at all, doing much better. Wow, just beautiful. And that's because that hydrotain is sucking moisture out of the air, even in a pot. The moisture is being sucked out of the air, brought down right next to the roots. 
and it's keeping it hydrated properly. Now, one caveat. I can't just let that go forever. If I let this one go for another 24 hours or 36 or whatever, depending on how much heat we have in the air and how, you know, how much uh, sun beats down on it and that, it will also start to fade. Hydrotain is not a replacement for watering altogether. All it does is it gives you an extension of your watering or reduces your watering in effect. So that's the key. I don't want you to think, oh, well, I'm bulletproof now. No, it, the plant's still gonna need water. But as you can see, in this 36 hour period, the one back over there is suffering and needs to be watered and this one doesn't. So obviously, now what I'm gonna do is give this one some water and some hydrotain. That way it can be on the same playing field as that one. And then the idea will be, instead of me having to water these every day, maybe I only have to water them every third day or fourth day. We'll just see how long they go until they tell me they need some water. So in summary, you can have a great lawn with just store-bought fertilizers. Now, I sell some fertilizers, I'll link them below, that are a little bit more funky fresh. They've got biostimulants in them, biochar, things like that. They're gonna also help build the soil and give you a healthier base overall. But those are really what you might call more intermediate or advanced fertilizers. It's perfectly fine to learn and get great results with store-bought stuff, and maybe that's all you'll ever use for the rest of your life. But I'm someone that believes that once you catch the bug, once you see the results you can get, you're gonna to wanna to go further. You're gonna to wanna to hack it more. You're gonna to wanna to pull more levers. You're gonna to wanna to figure out new ways to get things looking better, faster, longer, and sustaining growth that's healthy for the long term. And that's kind of what I teach here. So don't forget, I do have a free email list. I send out an email every Tuesday with lots of tips in it. If you click the link in the description below, you can sign up for that, it's free. As well as we'll give you tons of free guides on pre-emergence, weed control, grub control, all kinds of other things to help you get down the road to educating yourself to a better lawn. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, The Lawn Care Nut. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the lawn.